So I think one of the most misunderstood things about relativity uh, has been, why were we 3D printing barrel sections on, on a rocket with Terran 1? So when I started the company uh, nine years ago, we knew that additive manufacturing was really only able to build about a cubic foot in, in scale. So I thought with a bunch of smart people and a bunch of time, we could really push the boundaries of what that technology was capable of. And we did just that. We built a rocket that was 85% 3D printed, launched it to space. We proved the viability of our additive manufacturing tech. Coming off of the Terran 1 program where the primary tanks were wire arc additive manufactured, we reviewed that decision again and for the Terran R program. And coming out of that trade, we felt that for the Terran R program right now and right today, friction stir welded aluminum alloy tanks are the best choice for us right now. And so at Relativity Space, we're not afraid of changing and pivoting where we need to, um, to meet our development goals. And our development goal, to be really clear, is to field a very commercially viable, high-performing vehicle. And so we're not dogmatic about how anything should be made or the history of the, rock, the, history of the company or anything like that. We're, we're just dogmatic about fielding a great product. Our manufacturing methods are a trade like anything else on the vehicle. And it's really important to understand the pros, cons, and risks of every trade. And so when we look at a manufacturing method that could be as impactful as how we're making the barrels or the domes or the fairings, this really comes down to a balanced approach between engineering, supply chain, manufacturing, and the global business. Smart decision-making is optimizing for the entire business, not just focusing energy in one particular area that, that we may optimize locally. The latest tool at the time that's gonna be the best choice for, for manufacturing is what we're gonna use. And we initially set out to try to print the domes. We quite frankly struggled to get that process at rate high enough to really kind of fit the commercial needs of this vehicle. So from there, we pivoted to more traditional aluminum lithium alloy domes. And we're partnering with a supplier to help us develop them. So the domes that we're buying are some of the most advanced that have ever been produced. I have personally seen domes produced four different ways for different launch vehicles. And this is one of the most performant production methods I have ever seen. And this outside vendor being really good partners with us. They want to scale with us. They want to invest in our business. They want to share their learning and they want to help Terranar succeed. This is where we had to make a smart decision for our business and truly a smart decision for our customer's business. Any successful development program that I've ever been a part of or ever seen really didn't have a perfectly straight and narrow path right to developing that great product. And I think what defines kind of the success of companies and programs isn't necessarily how many great choices the company made out of the gate. It's really the agility and ability of the staff and the team to pivot as quickly as possible and still drive progress and quite frankly, not be phased by change. Sometimes development is running down the wrong path as quickly as possible to then pull yourself out of that path as quickly as possible to get on the right path. We have gotten farther in 3D printing because we invested in those domes and we're using that 3D printing technology elsewhere. We're still using additive manufacturing on Terran R in areas where it really helps us. You know, things we're looking at are areas that help us get to market faster, develop, build, and test faster. WAM has been a big part of our engine program since the onset. We use WAM to clad our outer jacket for pressure capabilities on the main combustion chamber. I think we're seeing some tension between how we would optimize Terran R from an engineering perspective, from a technology perspective, and how we would optimize it from a business perspective. It's not uncommon that a company such as ourselves needs to strike a balance between those things. When we think about the long-term trajectory of Terran R, much technology development will occur. Many insourcing decisions will occur. Those are not necessarily the right trade for the business today. The manufacturing processes are on the front lines of that tension, of those decisions we have to make between what technology do we want to push ourselves and where do we need to compromise, perhaps, to advance the business goals. And I think the fairing falls into that category. It's a very large structure and also the separation mechanics and the multi-body dynamics of having the fairing separate cleanly, um, getting the fairing qualified, also the fairing acoustic performance. 
in addition to heating performance, those are all very tricky engineering things to get right. And quite frankly, I feel very fortunate to have a partner that can help us um, build our first fairings. And so for our business, it's really a question of, do we want to spend our resources and our time that way? And is it right for the customer trade? Does it matter for their objectives that we build our own fairing? Or can we start delivering on our customer demands faster by partnering with a company who can provide us some of the experience and production capability on a fairing system? The COPVs were a similar trade-off. It will be more beneficial to the program right now for sake of execution speed to partner with a vendor to get our COPVs off the ground. Every decision, both technical and non-technical, we have our customers in mind. We're developing this vehicle to be a commercial workhorse that can really help support and deploy customer, uh, you know, customer constellations or satellites um, and for, for their own businesses.